So this video will have some information for you talking about the differences between peripheral artery disease and venous insufficiency. So this is an area that I find that students very frequently get confused and actually um, get very simple questions wrong on exams. So first, just to refresh, remember peripheral artery disease uh, has to do with the periphery. So the arms, the legs, the extremities, it's very similar to what coronary artery disease is, but now it's in the peripheral arteries. So we have to think about um, the arteries that are in the arms and the legs are plaqued up. You're having a hard time getting the blood to the extremities. So uh, we have uh, restricted areas within the arteries and blood is not getting to the extremities. Now when we have venous insufficiency, it is of the veins and the veins are having a hard time pumping the blood back to the heart. So now we have edema, swelling um, in the extremities. So that's kind of the big difference. Remembering peripheral artery disease has to do with perfusing to the extremities and venous insufficiency, the veins are not having, are having a hard time getting the blood back. So uh, when we think about peripheral artery disease, also sometimes referred to as peripheral vascular disease, we have different areas where we have um, increased risk for these, the plaque and um, the restricted areas. So this kind of gives you an example of the lower extremity of areas where you will commonly find um, some restricted areas. So atheros atherosclerotic lesions throughout. So when we think about peripheral artery disease, you know, a lot of times it's not a, an acute condition, it's more of a chronic condition, which then can result in some acute problems. So some of the complications that we're worried about is um, atrophy of the skin and the underlying muscles. So a lot of times when you have someone with peripheral artery disease, the skin looks very taut. Usually that extremity is very thin. If they do get any type of wound, um, it is much more difficult for it to heal because you're not, you're not perfusing oxygenated blood to that extremity. So you'll see delayed healing. They do have increased risk for infection and necrosis and arterial ulcers. So when you think about peripheral artery disease, you think about the necrotic toes, the necrotic um, feet, and you think a lot of times of amputation because when someone does get that necrotic toe, uh, if it gets to that point, high risk for infection, bone infection, so a lot of times the treatment will be to, to amputate. So you might be seeing just a toe or two amputated. If the disease is severe, you'll continue to see amputations of that um, extremity. So uh, medications, so there's a lot of medications that a patient can be on to try to help um, with the problems, with the symptoms, help kind of manage this chronic illness. And so you'll see antiplatelet agents being used. So similar to for someone who has coronary artery disease, we want them to get aspirin and Plavix because now we have arteries in our lower extremity that are no longer smooth. And because they have the plaque building up on the arteries, clots can form there and break off and cause DVTs or then travel and become pulmonary embolism. So you'll see them on aspirin Plavix. Um, ACE inhibitors, you might see someone on a medication like Ramifril, and that's to help increase peripheral blood flow. So that's gonna help get the blood flow to the extremities. It's gonna help prevent some of those complications we talked about, but it's also gonna help prevent some of that intermittent claudication, um, the pain. So it'll have a secondary effect for that. Uh, other medications that are specifically just for the intermittent claudication are listed here, and that would be medications like Trentil or Pletal, and those work a little bit differently because they're, again, helping to work, treat the symptoms, not necessarily the problem. But uh, medications like Trentil will decrease the blood viscosity, so kind of helping to move that blood so it gets through those arteries to the lower extremity to perfuse, perfuse and decrease pain. And then medications like Pletol help with vasodilation. So again, it's gonna help so the patient can ambulate without having any pain, so really decreasing the pain. There are other um, complementary and alternative medications that patients can use that are over the counter. And many of these um, have been found to have effects with uh, vasodilation, decreasing um, plaque formation, having anticoagulation abilities. So these are medications you might have a patient taking. Uh, we do have to be careful with some of those, uh, especially like vitamin E, because of its anticoagulant abilities, it can increase a patient's risk for bleeding if they're on other anticoagulants 
or if they're taking NSAIDs. Um, so the medications, you know, there's a lot of research still being done on these types of medications, but um, there's not any solid proofs that says that they will um, help with the pain, but they have been, um, some patients will say that they're very helpful. So if they're using them and they're helping, they should, they should use them, but um, really any of these medications should be taken with a, a provider's approval first. Uh, invasive treatment, so if the peripheral artery disease becomes severe, um, they may need to go in there and remove some of the plaque, do some angioplasty to those um, areas. And so it would be very similar to what you were talking about when we talk about cardiac catheterization, but now we're doing it in the peripheral arteries. So they can go in and they can do angioplasty with the ballooning where they're pushing the plaque to the side. Um, they can leave a stent in place where they will help keep that artery open. And they can also do um, atherectomies where they're going in and it's kind of like uh, thinking about like a roto-rooter. It goes in with a rotary cutter and removes the plaque that is in um, the artery there. So um, a lot of times, again, these patients are gonna be on long-term antiplatelet agents, so the aspirin and the Plavix. There is an option for surgical treatment if there are areas that are um, very long, so long areas of stenosis or if they're very calcified we can't put a stent in that area. So remember, a stent is only gonna be able to fix very small lesions. If you have a larger lesion, a patient's gonna to have to have what's called a peripheral artery bypass. And you can see from the, the picture there, what they do is they'll use a graft um, and reroute the blood around that occluded area to bring blood flow to that lower extremity. Um, but again, if those are not possible, or they do those and those fail, or the patient has large infection in that lower extremity, Oftentimes, amputation is the surgical treatment. When we move on to venous insufficiency, um, you know, you're going to have patients who a lot of times will have swelling in the lower extremity. Because of all that swelling and the inability for the venous system to move the blood back to the heart, you're going to see venous ulcers. So oxygen, blood um, perfusion can't get to the outer extremity, so you're gonna see venous ulcers. Venous ulcers are different. Usually they're more on the ankle area, the lower extremity. Um, they're red, they look similar to this. So different than our necrotic ulcers or peripheral artery disease. Complications for venous ulcers is they can be painful. The patient has lower extremity edema, so difficult to get shoes on, um, may have some self-image um, issues with that, and they are at risk for infection. A lot of times they can have these long-term non-healing ulcers because a lot of times you'll see these patients who also have other problems. So they might have diabetes as well. So now we have diabetes, which um, delays wound healing, and now we have venous insufficiency. So these long-term ulcers, if they are chronic and become infected, can also result in amputation. Although amputation is more common with peripheral artery disease. So interventions for our patients with venous insufficiency is gonna be stockings. Compression stockings are gonna help um, you know, mobilize that fluid back um, into the venous system and back up to the heart. It's gonna help decrease the swelling, increase perfusion, those types of things. Elevation will also be helpful to help promote blood flow back, back to the heart. They can take, usually it's mild analgesics if they're having pain. Uh, wound care, uh, if they have the open ulcers, they'll have to learn how to do wound care. Um, and they may or may not be on antibiotics. A lot of times for these non-healing ulcers, if they're not infected, we are not giving antibiotics. So you wouldn't see, you would see antibiotics more for the ones when they become infected. So you might see patients getting wound cultures to make sure there isn't any infection in there, uh, wound debridements to help promote um, healing of that wound, and may or may not have antibiotics. Skin grafts may be an option for a patient as well, but it really depends because if the patient has severe venous insufficiency, and we skin graft that area, it's likely that the skin graft is gonna work. So it's really gonna to have to depend on, um, you know, all the things going on with the patient, but you may see um, some skin grafting as well. So this kind of a little chart just helps again, bring the two conditions together and help you kind of point out the difference. It's really important to make sure you understand the difference because again, this is where students get tripped up. And again, another picture just to kind of remind you, uh, for peripheral artery disease, typically you're gonna be seeing those necrotic ulcers um, on the toes, the foot, and your venous ulcers are gonna be more on the ankle, 
the lower extremity. You're not going to really see, maybe on the top of the foot, but you're not really going to see the necrotic toes. All right, that concludes this video.